So this whole thing has been a whirlwind. Yeah. So that first 24 hours, it was surreal, it still is. Nothing seems real. But the moment you were elected, I, and I mean, my mask was just covered in tears. Like, I couldn't have given the sermon I did if you hadn't been elected. There's something so deeply powerful to me about what is happening in our church. And it's hard for me to, it's, you know, when it's you, when it's me, it's hard for me to see it for myself. Yeah. But when you were elected and we're together... I, it, it, it didn't hit me until today. I mean, you know, I was so uh, um, up in the moment of it and having a surreal experience. Uh, yeah. And, and then today, um, hearing Gay's remarks about Gay's how remarks. the um, invisibility of people of color, and especially women of color, mm -hmm. and, and the way that the whole system and its traditional identity yeah. is sort of built to not see and not hear and to minimize people of color into programmatics for other people. Right, right. <laughs> um, and and to, to hear her say those things, uh, I just start, I also started to cry. Yeah. Um, and because that's when I finally realized the significance of this. Don't want to blame or shame the past, but I am deeply grateful for the willingness of this HOD to move into the future. When Gay said those things, I could feel history yeah. happening in yeah. the room. Yeah. And that was something that was, I couldn't feel when I was elected because it's you're you're stressed out. You have all these things happening. Oh my gosh, my notes and this. And, you know, just oh, where do I stand? But then to be able to, oh my God, and you could, it was tangible in the room during Gay's remarks. And and it was important, I think, that she framed it as a white woman. Yes. She could speak to the sexism and misogyny yes and she could speak to really what she's been working toward throughout the her whole term her entire ministry her 10 years has yeah. been toward this point and so that's what i mean it's like i'm deeply grateful for those who've gone before that even yes. makes this possible right and um, we're two women for the first for the time. first time for the first time and 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 that in itself to me is just mind-blowing and, and when she framed it in terms of how long it's taken you know and that we really have only been at this and then we begin the whole convention with the reading of names of women who weren't even allowed to be seated including a woman in my own diocese not being allowed to be seated at convention and here we are and I, mean, I cannot not be moved by being a part of that journey I cannot not be moved so I'm gonna be praying for those ancestors uh, always. In fact, I'm, I brought with me and I'm wearing a bracelet for this convention. It says, all my ancestors are with me. <laughs> and it's it's not only, you know, bloodline, it's all yes. our relations. Yes. And, and to me, as a Native person, we talk about, the, and many, many, many uh, cultures and indigenous people uh, in North America recognize the three sisters of, you know, corn, beans, and squash. Yes. And to me, that's a very Trinitarian image anyway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm ready, I'm ready to, to, to plant and, and harvest and celebrate, and, you know, the, that, the Holy Spirit and Christ and God with us. I think it's something that in my heart of hearts, I pray to, um, to be willing to, to serve uh, God and the church in that way, but I never... I never dared to, to think this. I never dared. I, never dared. Um, I think it's almost because of our past experiences of um, the challenges that we've known mm -hmm. that we're going to be really appreciative yes. and, and uh, respectful of, of anyone who's having challenges. Uh, it, during the sessions, did you hear? You know, there was always a few no's. Yes. And and I just felt my heart saying, I want to love you too. Yeah. I love you too, I commit to that. And because we're all in this together. And we're, we've are we all been called to be on that floor. Um, in this whole world of the governance of the church, um, I think I understand it academically. And I understand the Western dominant culture pieces of it. Now we get to explore, okay, now here's the we, palette. You know? Right, right. <laughs> There's the canvas. How what are we, we going to paint this? Yeah. What color do we start with? Yeah. Uh, I think there's reason to be hopeful for the church. I know for some, you know, this change is going to feel like 
um, some both deaths and some scariness. And I know there's also on top of that just a generalized fear about the future of the church and real anxiety about numbers and all those very practical things yeah. that we want. Buildings right. and all that maintenance. Right. And then I think there's also always in that the invitation to invite people into, all right, so let's put all that aside. Let's not focus on being completely worried about what we need to preserve and, and know that we want to, but set it aside and allow our hearts and our souls to live into God's dream. Yesterday I couldn't uh, congratulate, I didn't have an opportunity to congratulate you on your election for VP, for Vice President. I went and looked for you on the House floor so I could congratulate you this morning. And we started hugging, and then Lester, the chaplain, started to give a prayer. And I yes. said, I'm going to stay in the hug mm -hmm. while we prayed. And then I could feel your breath while we were praying. And I think you could feel mine. Our, our inhales started to match. They started to go in sync. We were inhaling and exhaling together. And something external to us happened, and I needed to take a deep breath. Yeah. Because my I my I, I did not my eyes were closed I did not I wanted to be and you took the same deep breath yes, at the same, same time, time. <laughs> and and you know one of my deputies took a picture of that so I'll, oh my gosh I'll, I can send it to you yeah. for this upcoming two year biennium that we'll be looking at in all the task forces the interim bodies and everything else the leadership that we'll need there. A really interesting mix of people who've been around for a while, the institutional memory, the wisdom. You know, this is how this works. People to train younger folks, other people, newer folks, on just some of the basic processes and where things fit. But then also a lot of a lot of people who are new to the system, who are energetic, because we'll have to move quickly, who are willing to ask questions and hard questions and also willing to uh, tinker I guess I mean in two years you can only do so much and and then to work together to find ways to begin to open up those opportunities in the future for me there's something of a almost a cultural assessment oh, you know to do yeah. of the culture of the institution just listening and assessing isn't judgmental it's just saying let me understand how it works like, because how it works isn't is rarely just what's on paper <laughs> right right <laughs> it's, it's like how is it actually operating yes. how are the relationships actually yes going yeah and then for me it's wherever there's anything that might be considered i don't like the word dysfunctional but non-functional or you know or, or not functioning as well as it would need to like when you're trying to make an engine of a car go well, you don't say, "Oh, that's dysfunctional." <laughs> right, right. You say it needs to be fixed. Right. right. <laughs> and, we just, and we can fix it. So I'm excited to explore that. You know, what are people loving? What are people hoping and already recognizing where change needs to happen? Right. And what can we start working on, even in two years? Right. So I think we definitely can, Absolutely. especially with the leadership that we have. We can. I think we have. Dedicated, dedicated people. Again, why do I do that? Because you and I exist. Right. <laughs> we could. And felt called, and, yes. and here we are. By those people. One of the things that I love about our church, the Episcopal Church, is that lay people have a voice at nearly all levels. So, you know, not presenting the show, right? But, <laughs> but at all levels of the church. And actually, that's one of the things that early on, you know, when I first came in into an Episcopal church, I had those initial experiences that told me there were signals. So when I first came into the an Episcopal church for the very first time, I saw a woman priest, and it blew my mind. I I had never even considered the idea that women could be priests or, or pastors. It wasn't even a question that I could ask myself. And here I had just walked in not knowing very much at all, and, and there she was embodying a whole different way of doing church and practicing faith. And I was immediately hooked. And then a little bit further on, you know, 
uh, learning, you know, becoming involved in an Episcopal church and taking formation courses, to be able to find out that a lay person can have leadership positions all the way up, and then I'm here 20 years later, it's still really, it still has to settle in. I can't believe it. One of the things that I am so convicted about is supporting lay leadership and kind of moving away from the classic clericalism. What's the first order of the church? The lay, the lady. And there have been moments when I've reminded, you know, the more classically oriented clergy, that's, that's where we're here. That's why we exist. For me, I have dear friends I've respected and worked with for 20 years and more who are tremendously skilled and empowered lay people. And they get so annoyed when their priests come up to them and say, you know, you're a wonderful leader. You should think about becoming clergy. You should go into the sermon for ordination. And like, they just now at this point put their hands on their hips and says, I'm as empowered as God needs me to be because I have my baptism and that's all I need. Without that foundation, and that's the one that matters, without that formation, um, it, there's nothing we can do. We're supposed to share. We're supposed to do it together. Do it together. <laughs> Cultivate it. And this is something that I think the Episcopal Church needs to work on, is a discernment that lay leaders do. We don't have a lot of conversations or training or even a culture where we talk about what does it mean to have discerned yourself to be a lay leader. I'm a discerned lay leader. I discerned and decided I am going to continue to be a lay leader because when you're an empowered lay person, mm -hmm. You're right. The first thing is, oh, are you considering holy orders? Mm -hmm. No, I'm discern. I'm a discerned lay leader. Mm -hmm. There's also a classic thing for clergy when uh, peers or bishops see, you know, hey, you know, you look like you, you're really amazing leader. But you should think about becoming a bishop. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm discerning that. I was looking at that, and then, but it just never was clicking. And I, you know, okay, I'm trying to be open-hearted. And then when I was invited to think about this, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's what I want to support, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's why I was so clear that I wanted to run for VP, because I was so clear that I, was called, I felt called to support lay leadership. That was something that stuck out to me in your candidate uh, survey that was posted, was that you had done the discernment for the vice presidential role. I mean, I was just... Praying, praying hard that a lay person would be elected, and I kept people would say, "Who do you like? Who do you like?" I said, "The lay people." You know, <laughs> and, and that, I mean, my clergy peers were super duper talented. I, I would have been, you know, fine, but, yeah. but that's really where my heart was. Yeah, because I think clergy need you to exist as much as lay people need you. Did you know each other before? No. no. <laughs> this is our first face-to-face no. -face face -face conversation. conversation. I, I can't wait to see what the next gospel is. Because <laughs> we get to be a part of it. Isn't that crazy? It's <laughs> totally crazy. I love that. Oh my God. I feel really good about it.